Hello guys and welcome back to Control Zero. In this video tutorial I want to show you a little trick on timer modules. And it is like a hidden feature. It is the time remaining output, as you see right here. And what it does, it actually counts down the time of the timer. See that my time duration is 600 seconds and it's counting down. Which, which is a pretty cool feature. And before we start, if you think this training video is useful, please consider subscribing. Okay, let's get into it. Sorry, I had to put some action. This counting down timer is just boring. Anyways, let's start by creating a new timer. So I'm just gonna pick this activity, timer activity, right click view logic, and I'm gonna look for a timer drag it over let's zoom in and if you notice uh, all timers only show one input and one output so we can actually expose uh, more more inputs and outputs as well let's right click on the timer and select expose ports for connection and you can see that uh, here we have our all of our inputs and outputs available for exposure so you can make connections to, to it so I will do duration and reset on this side. And for outputs, this is the one that we are interested in, time remaining. So I'm just gonna pick that and click OK. And now I'm just gonna assume that you know how to add inputs and outputs uh, to this timer. So I'm just gonna do it very quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave the default settings in the timer, it's a pulse. And you can see that the time duration is five seconds, uh, which means that uh, it's gonna pulse for five seconds whenever you give a, a true uh, command to the input. So basically you give it a true, it's gonna output a true for five seconds and then it's gonna go back to false, right? But this five seconds uh, is the default time. If, if nothing is connected to, to this, input but you can actually uh, change that in here so I can put let's say um, 30 seconds and I can put you know seconds as my units apply and click OK now let's go ahead and start a simulation and I want to do real time not five times fast so real time and start now you can see that we have our 30 seconds time delay and as I showed you before it has a default value of 5 seconds uh, and but the current value is 30 that's because we have an input connected if you didn't have anything connected here it will pick the default value right that that's very important to note okay so let's give it a start command so or in, our input is gonna be true. So we are expecting a true on the output for 30 seconds, because it's a pulse, right? So I'm gonna right click, command, give it a true, click OK, send. We got a true and we got a true, and that's for 30 seconds. And yeah, let's just wait. And something very interesting, you notice that, that the time is not counting down. So you will expect to see some numbers changing, right? Especially before the true uh, going to false. But nothing happens. Now it's, it's back to false and it didn't work. So I'll show you the little trick that you gotta do in order to get this to work. So let's double click on my timer. And the trick is right here. You know, it's not obvious, but it's right here. It's under a setup, time remaining update interval. So basically, if you have a zero, uh, my time remaining output is never going to work. So um, usually I put 30 seconds, you know, when I have longer ti timers, because I don't, I don't like the timer to update so often if I have many timers in my application. But for this case, I'm just going to put uh, to update every second. So in theory, uh, we should, we're supposed to be seeing uh, my countdown updating every second but since the simulation refresh rate is not kind of real time so you, you will see that uh, it will skip some numbers so let's try it again 
So I'm gonna command this back to false. So everything is back to normal. Then I'll start the pulse again. So right click, command, give it a true. Okay, send, true, true. And we should see now my countdown, the uh, counting down, 25 seconds. You know, the refresh rate, I think it's every five seconds, even though we, uh, we chose one second. But, uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, the trick, you know, putting a number here on my interval. Once it's done, this is going to go to false and we're good. All right. Now it works. So this could be very useful in many scenarios. Let's say you have a boiler pump off delay. You can map this point and show a countdown of when the pump is going to stop. Another example will be a temporary occupancy status. You will know exactly when that mode is going to end. Okay, this is the end of this video tutorial. I hope you'll find a good use for this trick. And if you think this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. If you have any questions or would like me to create a tutorial on a specific timer module, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot and see you soon.